Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to another season of Super Engines Tournament. This time is season 19 of TSEC Tournament and I would like to show you some of the games um, of the Premier Division. Uh, for those you don't know, we have a couple of divisions, they called leagues. Uh, so, for example, we have Qualification League um, and then two best teams advance to the League 3 um, and so on. So, from League 3 to the best teams to League 2, uh, from League 2 to the best team to League 1. And from League 1, as you see now, uh, we have two engines which were qualified uh, by the best scores um, to the Premier Division. So, Fire and Scorpio and N. Uh, and now, after 17 games in the Premier division uh, I choose some of the games interesting games most of the games you know ended in the draws uh, and these tournaments the best eight um, engines in the world actually compete in the fourth uh, round robin tournament so the best as expected stockfish and it's all good stockfish uh, with neural networks that means stockfish which learn from own mistakes uh, also lila chess zero this is pure um, engine which learn from the from from the mistakes uh, so uh, as expected you know 10 and a half points four wins and zero loses so far uh, and then we have uh, two engines which also were the strongest in the season 18 stuflis and ali stein so very strong strong engines as well uh, and then we have um, the two newcomers plus ethereal and komodo and komodo was quite strong in the last season so huge surprise the komodo has four losers and didn't even win one game so a uh, very big surprise Probably Ethereal, Fire, Scorpion and Komodo gonna fight for staying in the in the Premier Division. Stuflis and Alistein, I believe they gonna have, you know, third and fourth place. And Stockfish and Lila Chess Zero gonna advance to the Super Final where they gonna play a game. In the last season, just reminder, Stockfish won over Lila Chess Zero. So now we will see what will happen as both of the engines are really, really strong and play really brutal chess and today i would like to show you the game between stockfish who's gonna play as white and ali stein who's gonna play as black so without further ado let's see what happened on the board uh, first eight moves were pre-arranged so we have zuckertort uh, opening uh, against the leningrad dutch so um, g3 knight f6 bishop g2 g6 d4 bishop g7 castle um, and then white uh, bring the bishop to the to another diagonal just to play against the, the the bishop dark square bishop we have d6 bishop b2 uh, queen e8 just preparing in the future um, e5 just supporting that um, and then we have c4 and knight a6 uh, end of the book here so all of these moves were prearranged and now the engines are on their own. Um, and here knight bd2, this is the, the main idea played by human. Knight c3 is also possible, queen c2, uh, this is also playable. And finally d5, uh, where black has to choose, uh, you know, what to do with this annoying pawn on d5, challenge him. Uh, usually they play something like c6 uh, or c5. Uh, however, in our game, a stockfish choose to play rook e1. And this is quite the sign line. We have only 10 games um, in the database. But interesting thing, most of them were played by Loeg van Veli. Uh, that was probably um, Netherlands Dutch um, Grandmaster, which most of these games won actually as white. So Rook E1, definitely good choice. We have b6 by Ali Stein, knight b2 d2, bishop b7. And here, believe me or not, but we have only one game in the database with e4. And after e4, black resign. So I don't know the story behind that game. However, it doesn't look like, you know, much fair play in chess. Maybe white needed some, some win to get some ranking or something. I have no idea. However, this is uh, everything we have in the database. Uh, but Stockfish goes for a3. a3 uh, preparing b4 and also, you know, taking away the square from the knight. So the knight, as you see, doesn't have many squares to go for now uh, and it's stuck on a6. We have e6. Of course, e5 is not possible because e5 is actually controlled three times, so it's not possible. This is why we have e6. Uh, and now b4, making a, a square the space for the queen. 
So the queen gonna stay on this dangerous diagonal. Uh, we have queen e7 uh, and now queen b3 as planned. And now, of course, in the plans in the future, maybe not now, c5 definitely is on the white's radar. So what black tries to do is blocking this forever. So c5 locking the pawn on c4 and saying, okay, you're not gonna advance. Um, and now we have b5. So locking the queen side, the knight have to be moved. So knight c7 and now a4, preparing in the future a5 uh, and trying to make some, um, some break, pawn breaks uh, on the queen side. We have rook a to b8, so uh, black remove the rook from the, from the a file. If it's open, then uh, black anticipate probably that uh, maybe the b file can be open. So this is why stockfish play queen a3, just, you know, prophylactically uh, moving away from the, from the b file, maybe open in the future, bishop a8, uh, and now we have e3, uh, and here a6, so starting to attack this, this pawn chain. And now what white could do, actually, it's not the best move in the position, uh, it could play something like b takes on a6, but it could be pretty risky because black actually can solve all the problems of the position except one, there is one weakness on, on b6, but it's not so easy actually to, um, to defend it or even don't need to defend because black gonna have the very strong attack uh, on the king side very typical for any king's indian um, you know structure pawn structures so for example knight a6 with the idea of jumping to b4 very nice outpost so uh, bishop c3 probably would have to be played and um, knight e4 now attacking this bishop uh, so the knights would be exchanged um, and after bishop e4 let's say white can exchange also the bishops uh, and uh, black solve all the problems uh, now they can start to attack for example e5 g5 um, you know f4 and, and so on so very strong attack and no counterplay uh, on the queen side so that would be probably uh, pretty nice for black. So this is why we have rook a to c1 and now rook f to e8. So improving the position of the pieces. Bishop c3 uh, taking under control the, the, the b4, uh, but also not this one, but also um, a5. Uh, and here we have a takes on b5. So anticipating that, okay, um, a5 is coming. So first we're gonna play a takes on b5. And now everybody expected that a takes on b5 gonna be played. What black probably would do is d5. Uh, and white doesn't have even time you know to go to the open file and control them the a file uh, because black gonna open another um, c file or d file um, and white has to you know stay with the rook on the c file probably maybe bring another rook to d file maybe stay on the e file a very complicated position so uh, to to big surprise actually in this position stockfish went for c takes on b5 and now, how to continue the game as black? Uh, definitely, these pawns are very, very interesting. A5 is coming in the future, and that means white gonna have the, the pass pawn, a very dangerous pass pawn on the, on the queen side. We have knight c to d5 by Ali Stein. However, in this position, bishop d5 probably was much, much better because this bishop controls, you know, very important squares. Uh, and also, for example, c4 can be played and lock all the position and then start to attack, you know, um, on the king side. So white wouldn't have much counterplay. Probably would have to play something like d takes on c5, d takes on c5 and so on. Uh, however, black, you know, uh, stands pretty good here. Um, and and uh, you know this bishop controls all the center the knight is is slightly uh, locked over there but the, the knight uh, could come for example to the game this way um, and also for example jump to e4 and get the outpost on e4 so that could be one of the plans However, as I said, we have knight c to d5 and now d takes on c5, b takes on c5, if d takes on c5 it's also possible, however, white would have very active gameplay. Bishop e5 with attack on the rook, uh, let's say move the, the rook to the, to the open d file um, and then knight c4 and this knight is uh, for now is for example looking on b6 but also if black would try to remaneuver for example the rooks um, then this knight, for example, can jump also to d6 and can be very, very annoying. So uh, 
probably that would be too much you know to handle for black uh, and the position would be too difficult this is why Ali Stein has another plan uh, and actually play b takes on c5 so white has this connected past pawns very dangerous one but black also you know has the center and all of this center can uh, can rush plus of course the attack on the king side so this pawns post center it it looks like very very powerful uh, tool who's gonna be first let's see uh, what happened in the game bishop b2 so um stockfish gonna uh, actually avoid the exchanging for the knight uh, and now we have e5 so alistein actually starts the attack we have rook e to d1 making a space for the knight r for example black can come to e4 and indeed alistein went for e4 kicking the knight knight e1 as you see the rooks are, are connected already so uh, it was pretty important move and now we have knight b4 very nice outpost for the knight also this knight uh, would like to go to the outpost on d3 for now is defended by the knight so you know that it's not it's not that easy uh, we have bishop f1 now protecting the pawn on b5 and that means white gonna push them the a pawn uh, we have g5 and now uh, a5 as well so as predicted this pawns gonna march and black gonna attack and it looks like black are too slow on the on the king side so let's see what happened over the board because now we have f4 so attack is coming and the pawns are very very strong we have knight c4 so very natural square for the knight for now attacking the pawn on d6 so um the pawn is attacked twice so have to be moved we have d5 and then knight jumps to b6 so a lot of things happening on the king side but also both sides have for example the knights on them on the queen side and all of these pawns very exciting game so far we have knight g4 ali stein starts the attack and now uh, ali would like to bring the queen uh, for example to the h file that could be very very dangerous uh, the bishops are watching at each other so we have bishop uh, g7 queen g7 so queen is closer and closer and alistein doesn't care about pawns so we have rook c5 uh, and now queen h6 threatening the checkmate on h2 we have h3 the only defensive move here and now another strong move boom knight f2 look at this so ali stein started to counter attack on the king side so as i said these pawns can be very very dangerous but ali steins found the the way how to counter attack on the king side straight on the position of the, of the king so very very interesting now how to continue you cannot take the the knight i mean you can take the knight but why would be in the trouble so for example f takes on g3 king g3 and now rook f8 would be extremely dangerous because now rook cut the king so the king cannot escape uh, from this cage and now uh, how to continue if white for example take the take the knight that would be a huge blunder because rook f1 uh, and now king g2 let's say queen h4 otherwise queen h4 is coming anyway uh, and now let's say rook c2 just to prevent any checkmate on f2 but then black would have an um, extremely strong move look at this rook f3 bang and uh, checkmate is coming this way or another way and uh, what you can do if you take the the rook then of course you're gonna lose the queen the queen on b4 is unprotected so uh queen b4 is not even possible uh the bishop is also attacked the bishop could actually go to e2 it's not so bad move uh, however it's still you know not winning for white bishop in g2 i would like to just show you how losing is this move because now what black have in the, on the position is queen d6 attacking the rook which doesn't really matter and attacking the king and now the king has to go somewhere but there are no moves do you see that all this um, f file is controlled uh, by rook and all of this diagonal by the queen so um king g4 is the only move and now look at this boom rook f4 and this is actually forced uh, checkmate in three so uh let's say king g3 now rook f3 double check 
so the king has to be moved king g4 rook g3 uh and now wherever the king goes uh if h5 then we're gonna have a checkmate over there and over here we have a checkmate as well so uh, after rook f4 uh, also e takes on f4 doesn't work because queen f4 and king h5 this is also a checkmate so also not possible king h5 of course gonna be met with the queen g6 so also not possible and finally uh, king g5 you already see that that's not gonna work queen e5 king h6 rook f6 and that's also a checkmate so as you see uh, after rook f8 uh, you cannot take the knight you cannot bring the bishop to g2 the strongest move in the position recommended by the engine actually is queen c3 with the idea of protecting the bishop indirectly and now if the bishop is taken then white actually can get the perpetual with rook c8 uh, and after rook c8 queen c8 and this could be a perpetual the point is if any of the sides try to play something else actually black has the mating um, net here queen h4 queen f2 and that would be the checkmate so white doesn't really have the time to you know experiment um, and bring uh, bring another pieces to the game so extremely dangerous you know if you take the the knight all you can get is a draw and white have to actually fight for a draw so this is why we have rook d to d5 um offering the the exchange um, and alistein accept so now we have knight d5 knight d5 uh, and here f takes on g3 is coming so already as you see very dangerous position knight can take on h3 the queen can get and then we have a checkmate uh, threat so now white have to be very very precise uh, stockfish played queen b3 uh, threatening some discovery uh, and probably black should play here king h8 king h8 avoid any discoveries uh, of course uh, queen c3 would be possible uh, and then king cannot go back because the knight gonna jump to, to f6 and that gonna be very dangerous you know uh, forking the king forking the rook um, the, the rook can come the attack to the attack um, and white probably would be faster in winning so queen g7 would have to be played and after exchanging the queens then knight c7 uh, attacking the rook so rook e to c8 uh, and then simply b6 uh, and it seems like white uh, you know have everything under control uh king g6 defending the pawn um on g5 and now this knight cannot be moved because rook is hanging so rook c2 now the rook is defended uh, and now how to continue as black because it, black has you know very difficult position here h5 attacking on the king side doesn't work because uh, knight a8 and this is everything forced not difficult to actually uh, calculate rook a8 rook c8 uh, and of course a6 and this pawn is gonna advance and win the game so for example rook c6 uh, b7 rook b6 and uh, yeah black can take one pawn but another pawn of course gonna advance so not even possible after rook c2 black cannot continue with h5 first bishop b7 very important move and after a6 let's say uh, any waiting move like rook d8 uh, and then if a7 is played then rook b to c8 uh, and two rooks and the bishop controls a8 also the bishop is a very natural very nice blocker in this case uh, and the b, b pawn also cannot advance so now let's say knight e6 rook can be uh, moved to h8 and now black can start to advance on the king side so only this way and also if this pawn takes um, takes on b7 you would ask what would happen uh, then white actually gonna lose both of the pawns uh, so for example rook d6 bishop a6 so this pawn can be defended however rook b6 and yes the bishop is defended the pawn is defended very nice cooperation also the rook defends the, the knight but still king g2 uh, let's say knight d1 now attacking this pawn how to continue uh, king g2 knight e3 
let's say rook e2 attacking the knight so knight can deliver a check and after king h2 let's say knight d6 so the pawn is defended and also this pawn is attacked so this pawn gonna gonna fall probably this pawn gonna fall as well uh, and this is rather a draw very complicated so probably this is the way how Ali Stein should go king to h8 that that was the way to go but Ali Stein is a very aggressive girl look at this rook f8 so creating the mating net this rook now controls the f file so the king cannot um, you know escape and now of course um the knight can can get h3 and the queen can come and that's gonna be a checkmate how to defend now we're gonna have discovered uh, check but how to do the discover check if you play something like knight f6 is not that great yes is double check but it's not that strong uh, because after king g7 there are no moves uh, knight d7 have to for example fork the rooks but it's not that great and i will show you this variation right now uh, in the game we had knight b6 so it's very similar uh, king g7 so now imagine the, the the knight is on f6 it's not that great the knight have to move to d7 the problem is knight d7 would be would be really bad move because it's too early it's too early because now knight h3 is very strong move and after bishop h3 queen h3 how you gonna defend how you gonna defend you have to play something like queen b2 defending second rank uh, but now king can go to h6 very nice place for the king and now how do how you continue knight f8 you can get back your um your exchange um so rook f8 and now let's say queen g2 but queen g4 queen g4 the rook f2 is coming the queen to to d1 is coming uh, and so on so black should have very comfortable maybe not comfortable game however it should be much better for black so this would be too early so this is why stockfish delivered the check first queen b2 very important check and now look at this the king cannot go to h6 this is very important and now if the king goes to to g6 all of this is not so 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 nice for black black is losing here for the one important reason knight d7 now uh, and knight h3 doesn't work anymore in black's favor because after bishop h3 queen h3 simply knight f8 is coming with check so it's coming with tempo and after rook f8 white actually has one beautiful move here which is winning and this is only one winning move for for white so i know it's not the main line it wasn't in the game however pause the video right now and find the winning continuation for white if you find it you will be very happy i i guarantee that while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so the only move uh, it's not very complicated but you have to you know uh, take a look for a while rook g5 sacrificing the rook temporary of course uh, and after king g5 queen g7 not because winning the the rook but because winning the queen winning the queen so look at this uh, if king f5 then of course white gonna win the queen this way so that's not possible king h5 would be forced queen h7 king g4 defending the, the queen and now queen g6 with check king h4 and now knight g2 and then king has nowhere to go beautiful one uh queen g2 uh king g2 and of course uh, white is winning so as i said queen b2 very important move because the king cannot go to h6 uh, so this is why uh, ali stein actually is forced to exchange the queens we have queen f6 queen f6 and now rook f6 so everything was simplified and there are no mating net anymore we we go to the end game or late middle game and now white has a very nice advantage knight d7 getting back the exchange first so we have rook d8 knight f6 king f6 and now knight c2 so uh, bringing the the knight to the game we have rook d2 now bringing the rook to the second rank it looks pretty dangerous but there is there is nothing here so uh stockfish just play a6 uh, and here 
what to play as black, how to continue. This pawn's gonna advance and win the game. If you try something like knight d3, it looks like pretty natural move, blocking the range of the bishop, so um, the bishop cannot support the pawns, um, and also the, uh, protecting b4. So, for example, the knight cannot go there, uh, which is pretty important, I will show you why, but it's still not enough. Rook c8, very natural move, kicking the bishop, bishop d5, and now rook d8, still harassing the bishop. And the bishop has to stay on this diagonal, uh, otherwise the pawn's gonna advance and then, you know, queen queening gonna win the game. So black has only one way actually to defend the bishop uh, with knight e5. Now the, the rook defends the bishop, but now knight d4 and now the bishop is still undefended. Uh, black would have to exchange the knight, so knight f3, knight f3, e takes on f3, but then rook d5 anyway. And then after rook d5, of course, a7. And this pawn gonna win the game. After rook d8, then we have b6. And we know already that the rook cannot stop two pawns. Uh, and these pawns are not so dangerous. Even the bishop can be exchanged for the for for both of the pawns, and uh, and of course white is winning in this variation. So this is why Alistair uh, played h5, but it's also not enough. We have rook c8 now attacking the bishop, bishop d5, and now knight b4 now attacking the bishop. This way with the knight on on d3 was not possible, but as you know the the rook al already did the, the the job here, and here for some reason Alistair actually could play something like bishop e6 just you know attack the rook and save the bishop however we have bishop c4 so it's it's bishop for for free literally we have rook c6 one extra check which what was wasn't actually necessary king f7 bishop c4 with check uh, and now king e7 uh, and now everything is already done bishop f1 now uh, still you know supporting this diagonal so the pawns cannot advance we have g4 h takes on g4 and now h4 so keeping an eye controlling them the g2 and h3 squares and after rook h6 alistein resign and alistein resign because uh, this pawn's gonna be lost and this pawn's gonna advance and black cannot do anything about that for example h3 uh, simply bishop h3 and now what you play next you can deliver some check uh, let's say king g2 you can even defend that pawn but it doesn't really matter a7 is coming okay rook a1 and then knight a6 for example uh, and then in the next move we are gonna have the queen so all black can do is you know take the knight but of course it doesn't really matter so uh, this is why after rook h6 Ali Stein resign. What a game! Very tactical game. Crazy attack by Ali Stein. So very, very beautiful. However, Stockfish uh, proved and you know calculate much better and defended the position. And these two pawns just you know won the game. Beautiful game. If you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, uh, press unlike. And if you want to see another games uh, from TSEC 19, season 19, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.